Hello, everybody. Welcome to Canine Corner. I'm your host, Eli Grasham. I'm joined by my co-hosts over here in the kennel, Carlos Lopez and Tessa Stefanatis. I need to get a cough off, holy crap. <laughs> there we go. Are you okay? There we go. Are you okay? okay. Guys. <laughs> okay, it's good to know you're okay. All right, so we're going to kick into it. Uh, we're going to talk about the local professional uh, basketball team, the Indiana, Indiana Pacers. Took game two last night. First road <sighs> team this playoff, playoffs to win. It's they, the home teams have gone twelve and zero. Pacers stole the first one, made it yeah. twelve and one. Actually, I think the Mavericks did it right after the Pacers. Now it's twelve and yeah, two. Yeah, but Bucks and Bucks and six though still, even though not Giannis is coming back. I think Giannis comes back and that changed the fit. There's no no more Dame time. Oh yeah, Damien Damien's here, huh? No, D Dame's good. He's but, good. But I just possessions are going to be less for him. You know, he's nah, not nah get, I don't think so. He's not going to get the ball as much. What do you mean? When, he's, when he scored uh, 31st in that first half, they locked him down because they had no one else to give the ball to. Now, Giannis, 30, 30, he's going to have 35 again in the first half. Giannis going to have 35, boom. Have a I, quick... Hey, don't count out the, the home crowd in Indiana. I mean, I love the Pacers, but I don't think Tyrese can do it all himself. He needs to shoot the ball if he wants to do it. Exactly. If he wants to make something happen. Pascal Siakam has been playing like a superstar. They need Claylin Clark on the Pacers. Yeah, speaking of which, she just got that new Nike deal. Uh, eight years, I think twenty-eight. To, I think twenty-eight or thirty-three. It's way more 28 than million. twenty-eight million. Twenty-eight. It's way like she's set for life. Yeah, a lot of people were like, "Why leave Iowa? You're 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 making so much from NIL. Like you're you're losing money. You're not getting as much of money from the college. Like getting as much money from the pros as you did in college." And it's like this is why she leaves. You know, get that twenty-eight mil. And she's probably gonna have her first shoe. She's probably gonna have a shoe coming out soon. Yeah, and I will probably buy it. You know, I think the fevers have been huge. They recently worked with another company to get 17 games onto local broadcasts like WTHR. And that's so cool because professional basketball has kind of left these local networks. You know what, did you watch the Pacers game last night? I didn't. I don't have Valley. No, because, uh, like, no one could watch it in the Indiana area because I... Blackouts? No, I don't know. It, I don't well, know. it wasn't on uh, national TV. Exactly. It was like with the first pace, yeah. the first uh, playoffs so, game, so not dumb. to be on national TV. But we're gonna switch to something that while you watch TV, when you have some stage theater, guys and dolls, it's finally something Tesla can get behind. Yeah, uh, I've just been making faces at the camera the whole time. So how's time. that been going? I know you guys have been working hard. It's it's, it's been going good. Great, it's great. Come watch I, the show. Because I peeked in one time during baseball where we had to get the banners out, so mm -hmm. not. I look, he just wanted to stay there and just watched it. But it's a fun show. Opening a night is today, the day that we're recording. April 24th, 26th, 27th. Uh, $10 for adults, $5 for students. Uh, it's a great show. Uh, we've had a blast uh, rehearsing it and getting it ready, and we could not be more excited to show everybody. Super excited. Super excited. But now, without further ado, something I'm also super excited for is to introduce all of you to our esteemed guests. Paul Lukey. How are you doing? You know, I really don't shape Cubs Cubs fans' hands I mean, sometimes. Uh, I guess you just don't have you, you just don't know greatness yet. Oh. oh. All right. So, how are you doing today? Oh, good. Good. Uh, have you been excited for this? I know this is it's been a little over a week. I have not slept a wink since I was asked to be on K9 Quarter and. Okay. You know, tonight will be that first night. He's well, you're pumped. Doing, I'm you're, pumped. You're doing great for <laughs> not having any sleep in yeah. over like a, the past week. So yeah. uh, that's pretty impressive. <laughs> Personally, I haven't slept since the national championship game in March Madness where Purdue uh, lost to UConn. Yeah. I've been yeah, sleeping like a baby. I know that. you're. That was rough. That was rough. I, I know you're a Purdue fan. Can mm -hmm. you take, give us some takeaways. We asked Mr. Hale the same question. I mean, it was, it was a situation. I, Purdue didn't have an answer for, for UConn. They, they couldn't make adjustments, and UConn did everything they needed to. They, sh um, you know, they shut down the guards and the perimeter play. They let Zach Eady get his, knowing that he's going to get his. He's going to get 37 or 40, whatever he had, but nobody else is going to do anything. I mean, when you look at what Mason Gillis couldn't do, what Fletcher Lawyer couldn't do, um, you know, I think you know, Cam Heidi might have been probably one of their next best yeah. Players in that game, and that just if, do if Cam Heidi is your like second or third best player, then mm -hmm. that's it's not likely. And that's not the. I mean, that's not to say anything about, against Cam Heidi. I think he's going to be 
amazing for Purdue. Yeah, but for for a freshman to come mm-hmm. in and, and you know the biggest biggest game of their yeah. all their careers, like just for him to be that second contributor yeah. with like seven points, mm-hmm. it just it, it didn't go the way, but it was a good run in general. Yeah, I, I think I think the Boilermakers. Definitely. Oh yeah, it was a blast. I mean, you know, you know, growing up in Lafayette and. Being a Purdue guy, and you know, completely and utterly anti IU, um, <laughs> uh, I it, it was it was an exciting time. Yeah. Um, so hopefully, hopefully these trends continue. Uh, another exciting time. Uh, the Cubs, which you was mentioned earlier, are kind of having a good start to the season. They are. They get. They've gotten hit by the injury bug. Um, Cody Bellinger went out with uh, back stiffness last night. After his uh, two-run home run, but I mean, some back sniffs, sniff this too. I don't sit out. <laughs> You're not making eighty million yet. Oh, not yet. So, um, I yeah, I think I think they're exceeding expectations for what people thought the lineup was going to be. Um, I know there were talks because they didn't get Jordan Montgomery, they didn't get Blake Snell. They didn't get anybody in the free agency. They no. just wanted to stick with the same team. Yeah, really. and that's, I mean, I was listening to something yesterday, and they said, like, in Chicago and Boston, two of the biggest markets, and none of them want to spend the money that they have. Yeah, because yeah. uh, Boston but, got rid of Verdugo to the Yankees, and that's like, mm-hmm. the Boston never gives anybody to the Yankees. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, that's, that's like, uh, that's like, you know the North Siders making a trade with with the South Siders. Yeah, it just never happens. But when it does, you know there's a reason why. Yeah. So. But nonetheless, it's it, it's good start to the season. Definitely some promise on that team, and you know hopefully this even if it's minimal success still goes on and yeah and continues. You know the a rough rough ending to the season last year. They missed the playoffs by a game. Yeah. And when people say like oh games in April and May don't matter, oh, well. They matter. When you miss the playoffs by a game, that game in April or May, yeah, that where, matters. Where Kios Kizuchi drops a pot fly right in front of you mm-hmm. and <laughs> causes you the whole causes you the whole playoffs. Mm-hmm. That's right. bad. Now we're going to move on to our next question. This was very pertinent yesterday. Okay. You went on quite the ride yesterday. Yeah. Going on the Black Hawk. Mm-hmm. We, we actually uh, have a picture of you on it. Yeah, I, think I it was, mean, that's, it was, that's it was spot so cool. on. We had some insider information that you may have screamed. And squealed like a little baby. Squealed like a little girl. I can neither confirm nor deny that. <laughs> but I'll, I'll utterly deny that that took place. Um, oh, okay. okay. There may be a couple people in the uh, student services department that were on our flight that that, that, can, that screamed. Okay. So maybe one had a vomit bag just in case. Oh. I know which one it was. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so how was it? Was it? How was it the was, ride in it was. It was a cool experience. It was cool to see our students who have committed, you know, the next step of their lives. Uh, be rewarded in such a unique way, and to know that all of us that were able to to take it a part of it is because of them, and yeah. to see them excited and to ha- see them with their phones out taking pictures and video, it, it was a neat experience. Like you know, I was telling uh, one of the ladies in the in the cafeteria earlier, um, it's never something that I thought I would ever do, nor thought it was ever a bucket list item, but mm-hmm. now I can. Crossed it off a bucket list. You've been on a helicopter. Yeah. So where where did you guys fly? Like, did so you? So we went all all throughout Frankfurt. Um, we went out um, over a bunch of the neighborhoods, um, out into the country. They took us down um, down over the runway at the airport. Took us back up and then uh, kind of made our way through more of the neighborhood. Um, I remember, you know, not being from Frankfurt. I don't know every little location, but I remember um, seeing like TPA Park mm-hmm. and um, then we ended up, I think, I think like south, southeast of the school and then we kind of circled back around and, and came back in. It was maybe like a, like a 15 minute flight. So. Well, okay. seeing some of the video, of course, I don't know if it would be worth sitting out in the rain for me, especially how bad the rain was yesterday, but it seems like a stellar experience. Yeah, I think, um, luckily I was on that first flight. And so the rain hadn't really kicked up um, until we had gotten back. And luckily enough people had come, had come over with vehicles that those that were waiting on like the second and the third flights were just kind of hanging out in 
other people's cars. And when once we got back, you know, myself, uh, Mrs. Classen, Mrs. Donovan, um, the students, um, you know, we were able to just all go inside and you know continue on with the day. So we nice. didn't get we didn't get overly drenched. All right. Well, we know uh, that you are a bit of a collector of mm -hmm. bobbleheads. We actually have probably I'm guessing your favorite bobblehead because it's you. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us about how you got into that uh, so collection? it um, it kind of just started in college um, uh, a buddy of mine um, his name's uh, Chris North uh, we went to a we went to a Cubs Padres game and they were giving away um, it was an Ernie Banks bobblehead and it just kind of it just kind of grew from there and when I got into teaching and I've always been like a collector of like sports memorabilia like growing up, it was it was baseball and basketball cards, and so when I got into teaching, um, I was watching. Like I'd get up in the mornings and I'd watch Mike and Mike, and they always had like their bobbleheads displayed and things like that. And I thought that was a really cool idea. So in my classroom, um, you, know, um, you know, had been collecting throughout the years and going to events where they were kind of doing giveaways, and I'd put the bobbleheads out in front of my desk for like my students to come and take a look at some of them would would take them back to their desks and um you know some of them would like mess with them if they were like taking a test kind of like i guess a little fidget uh type thing and it just kind of grew from there and it's kind of always something i've, I've associated myself with within a classroom and now my offices now do you have a favorite bobblehead i i think i do i think it would it wouldn't be one that was at a giveaway. It would be um, a special edition. Uh, Pat Hughes, who is the radio commentator for the Chicago Cubs, um, it's him. It's a voice automated one calling the final out of the of Game Seven of the World Series in 2016. And oh, that's dope. So I think that'd probably be my favorite one. That's one that is that, uh, cool. that I keep at home. So yeah, I, I own one bobblehead it's broken i got it when i was a little kid it was it's uh steven scheffler okay steve scheffler. i went it was like a special night at mackey like i was in the kids club at the time and they were mm -hmm. them out and i yeah. got that one broke almost immediately like i dropped <laughs> it on the way home yeah but uh i still have it sitting somewhere I, I don't know exactly where i think it's on my bookshelf i used to have a purdue pete one and he had like a little sledgehammer and everything i don't know where it is though I know That's I got good, it I like at a Purdue game, like a Purdue softball game or something. But like the yeah. more bobbleheads people can get from Purdue, the better. You don't really see too many IU bobbleheads being given away. That's true. Because who would want them? Absolutely. I, I, you probably don't see them because they're busy in the garbage disposal. <laughs> like they're, they're, they're busy in the trash. Well, we're actually going to swing it over to our break. But immediately after our break, we're going to take it to my favorite segment, the Fast Five with the Kennel. We'll see you right after this. Aaron's Flooring. A family-owned business and your number one source for all things floors. We're dedicated to providing a wide selection of the best products. Aaron's Flooring has flooring experts on hand to help you determine your next steps in the buying experience. For all your retail and commercial flooring needs, we have products to help achieve the look and feel you desire. Stop into our Frankfurt showroom to view our wide selection of the highest quality products and services. Contact us today for a free in-home estimate and let us turn your house into a home. Hey, yep, we're back with the Fast Five. And where this is, we got five seconds to answer each one of these questions. And I'm gonna start it off with the, would you rather have the 2016 World Series or the, the Perdon National Run? 2016 World Series, because they won it. <laughs> Good That's point. fair. Good point. That's and, fair. Yeah, and then I know you played a lot of sports growing up, but which one was your favorite? Uh, I, swimming. I grew up a swimmer. All right, and uh, what about your Purdue Mount Rushmore? My Purdue Mount, Mount Rushmore. Oh, I'd have to probably mimic most of what, uh, what uh, Mr. Hale said the other day and prove that, Mr. Hale, I do, I do watch these. <laughs> uh, um, for me, growing up, uh, Glenn Robinson, okay? Um, I gotta go Zach Eady. Very much so. Rick Mount. Mm -hmm. Um, I was a big Carson Edwards fan. Oh, yeah. I completely and then, agree. And then this one, 
This one's gonna be really obscure. So oh. when I was uh, when I was in fourth grade, I was part of the Gene Cady uh, basketball camp, and my like group leader was a kid named uh, Paul Gilvitas. Oh. And for whatever reason, I still remember that all these years later. So I'm gonna put Paul Gilvitas up there <laughs> just because. All right. all right. The next question is going to be: We heard that you could juggle. Mm -hmm. Is that true? It is. Um, really. I, I took a. Um, again, why Purdue is better than IU. Um, I took a brain development course um, at Purdue and we did a lab where um, we had to learn, see if we could learn how to juggle by simply reading the instructions off a piece of paper or reading the instructions off that piece of paper and then having somebody demonstrate and teach us. And if I remember correctly, I think I uh, read the piece of paper and we started with scarves and I just kind of picked it up from there and just kind of taught myself how to juggle. Well, look at that. And no, that doesn't make Purdue a clown college. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty crazy. I, I think it does. <laughs> and then, uh, so we got the biggest question of them all. Like, this is like, like you might not come back. Helen Marin or Marilyn Streep? So if I pick Meryl Streep, I think that's the popular answer. If I pick Helen Miram, then Tessa's not coming after me. It's more that Mr. Taylor's not coming after me. Yeah. Oh, Mr. Taylor's not coming after me. Meryl Streep. Oh, <laughs> wow. Gotta love Mamma Mia. It's, it's a few in a row. Gotta love it. Never seen it. It's a few what? in a row. What? Never that, seen it. There's, I think there's only been like one or two people who've picked <laughs> Helen Mirren. That's true. I think it was Clayton and Santer. Mm -hmm. That's tough. That's tough. All right. Well, we are going to send it into the studio for our extra special director's question. I'm your tech director. Welcome to the control room and now to your director. Hi, so we're going to skip the director's question today and go straight into the director's demand. We heard that you can juggle, so do it. All right, so uh, Evans, we can uh, get some, please come on stage. Some juggling on stage. items. That sky, that bring, sky. Bring, bring in our, our, our balls here, <laughs> hand them into our special guest. Okay. We're going to need to see evidence okay. that you can, in fact, juggle. That I can, in fact, juggle? Yep. So, start it off. Oh. 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 I got it for you. I got it for you. We'll start it off with two, and then. Oh. 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 Hey. So, I know. It, they're, not, they're not chainsaws or uh, bowling pins. But very nice. Very impressive. I'm impressed. Very impressive. <laughs> there you go. You got it. Nope. Hold up. Okay. You're going to get it. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Like, I'm going to be disappointed if I don't see you on the mound doing that. And no. <laughs> currently, right now, Salee is in the studio saying, do not throw those so high that you hit the lights. <laughs> Just beam it at him. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming on today. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you, guys. See you. It's great mm -hmm. talking to you. Everyone got to learn a little more. A little more, yep. About our most recent assistant principal. Well, <laughs> we... <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Taylor, Taylor is off, off camera distracting, and I think what he's trying to get Eli to say is that tonight is going to be our opening night of the show, so you better be there. Yes, we told you at the start of the show, and we'll tell you again at the end, it is opening night for Guys and Dolls. Come and see it. We've worked very hard, and we know for a fact that you will enjoy it. Anyways, it was a great episode, a great guest. We thank Mr. Uh, Lukey for joining us today. Uh, we have to thank our crew here, amazing crew, Evans especially, for helping us take care of the balls. Uh, and we, uh, I don't think you can say that, Eli. <laughs> uh, I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Taylor and Mr. Salee for helping make this possible, especially the administration for uh, letting us do this. Also, uh, uh, what is that, POE? What does that mean? That's, that's our sponsor. Oh. Yeah, we have to thank them. Thank you all for watching today, and we'll see you in the next episode of K9 Corner. <laughs>